Hello again everybody, this is John with bestpricenutrition.com. Uh, today I want to talk to you guys about labdoor.com and specifically protein testing. Um, we did another one on fish oil as well. Um, labdoor.com is a company that I contacted and I recently did a video with uh, their founder Neil Thanadar and you know the sound just wasn't very good so I didn't want to put that out there so I figured I would summarize what we talked about here. Um, well in this case they were testing protein powders and real quick a little background on Labdoor. Um, what they do is they buy products just like you or I would from a website or off of a shelf and then they test them. They test the products once a year and they will continue to add products as well into their um, database. Now they have some of the information for free if you go to labdoor.com and you'll get some of the um, interesting data on the tests that they've had and you'll also be able to get a paid membership where you can get more in-depth info which is fifty dollars a year and they also have a smartphone app and what's different about what Labdoor is doing is you know a lot of companies and I think this is a good thing will um, have their products tested to make sure it's free of banned substances and they'll have a third party do it like NSF or banned substances control group that's really good if somebody's worried about you know testing you know for a, a, a given sport or what have you um, so that so that's one thing. What they're doing is they're testing to make sure that what's on the label is in the product, and then they're also testing for other things like heavy metals and things like that that may be uh, detrimental to your health. So they're doing all that for you. I think it's a really good thing. Now, specifically with protein powders, one of the things I wanted to get with, with uh, Neil on to talk about was true versus crude protein content. And those of you aware, sometimes protein powders are spiked with amino acids. So in other words, if you buy a whey protein, you want whey protein. You don't want whey protein plus glycine and taurine added to it. And you say, well, why do companies do this? Well, when you put protein content on your label, um, all you have to do is account for the nitrogen. And you do that with something called Cadal as one type test. Um, Dumas method is another test. And all you're doing is quantifying the amount of nitrogen. So all things that contain nitrogen are not necessarily protein. But you can do that for a label. So it's kind of a way around doing it. So a free form amino acid in and of itself is not a protein, um, but it does contain nitrogen. So that's why you'll see that. True protein content would be, you know, how much whey protein is there, how much casein protein is there. Not how much protein plus, you know, some free form amino acids. Um, you know, usually what you'll find is like taurine or glycine is added, and companies do this because it's cheaper. Um, now there's two ways of this. There's one way which is upfront and disclosing it where you could look on an ingredients label. I'm holding muscle tech phase eight. I can go to the ingredients label and I could find right after maltodextrin that taurine and glycine are added. Okay, um, it, do, do I love that? No, I don't, but at least it's on the label. Okay, that's a good thing. Then there's the more nefarious way of not putting it on the label. Now, that may be done by the manufacturer itself or by the company that's manufacturing for them because they're trying to save some money on the raw material and make extra margin. And from talking to Neil, most manufacturers were concerned that the latter is happening. Um, so what Labdoor does is, you know, you've, you'll, you'll probably, if you go online, you guys can find, you know, somebody tested a protein powder and said, hey, it passed. All that they're doing is quantifying the nitrogen. That's not going to check for amino spiking. Um, so they take it a step further and they do random assays to quantify the amino acid content because if you have, you know, X amount of whey protein, we know what the primary structure of it is. We know X amount of grams of whey protein should have approximately X amount of each amino acid. That's what makes the protein unique along with its you know, tertiary structure and whatnot, but primary structure we're talking about is just the amino acids bound together and how much of a given one there are. So if there's a whole bunch more glycine, for instance, than expected, that'll show up. And that would give us the true protein content. Um, so it's really good. It's nice that they're doing that. Um, and again, there's two forms. There's one where it's disclosed. Fine. Um, again, not a big fan, but at least you know. The second would be somebody's doing it and not telling you. You, For all you know, you look at the label and you pay for whey and casein or, you know, any number of proteins that, that you wanted and then it's in there, you know, there's a bunch of free-form amino acids or maybe they're counting something like creatine in the protein content. Because again, it's nitrogen containing, so it'll pass if you rely solely on that test. So, that's what's really interesting. Now, what they also have done is they test for other things too, fat, sugar, cholesterol, sodium. So just to make sure, you know, you want to make sure, hey, my protein powder says two grams of carbs. You want to make sure there's two grams of carbs, not, you know, 30, you know, um, which would be quite obvious because, A, the taste, the amount of the scoop, what have you. But regardless, you want to make sure that it's within the realm of what it says on the label. Um, so they've done that. Um, one thing that, um, that came up too was sodium was kind of high in some of the powders. Um, so that, that was an interesting thing that I found uh, with most of the tests. 
Um, and my thinking is hopefully as Labdoor gets more popular, well, this will make manufacturers, you know, more, you know, aware of these things and say, hey, you know, whoever's making their products, hey, make sure we test for sodium, make sure it's not in there at high level. Or, you know, make sure somebody's not adding it in there because they think people are going to gain weight from it by holding some water and stuff like that. And we have a video on salt and the actual effects and, you know, some of the hyperbole surrounding uh, health effects of sodium. You know, it, it really, it depends um, on that. Um, and they do letter grades, you guys. Um, I know people always ask us for a star rating or letter grades. And, you know, for me, it's hard to do that because I need context as far as, you know, what you're using it for to do that, but they have a criteria and they explain it like, hey, here's the best value, hey, here's the highest quality. So they're doing it based upon that and, um, you know, they're adjusting their criteria as it goes. You know, I, I looked at a couple, I said, well, maybe I would grade it a little bit differently, but it's hard when you have that much information. So I certainly understand um, what they're doing uh, in, in that regard. So you can get it there because um, there's other things that you guys need to consider. You know, there's no way to give a letter grade for taste. I know that, you know, people want to know, hey, does this taste good? And I'm happy to give my opinion, but my opinion, my, my palate is not going to be the same as yours. Texture. Some people like a liquidy shake. Somebody likes something more creamy and rich, so something with some fat and casein and stuff like that in there, too, along with their, you know, whey, what have you. Um, and then budget. That's another thing, too, that's going to play a role in it, you know. Something can get a, a, grade, a letter uh, grade of A, let's just say, but then if it's Cost, you know, way out of the realm, well, that should lower its grade. So it's, it's not the easiest thing to quantify. So certain things are going to rely upon you to become an informed consumer to make those decisions. So that's why I'm somewhat averse to letter grades and from our standpoint. But if you are seeking that out, Labdoor does do that for you, and they explain the criteria so you know what goes into it. So um, that's really nice. Um, one thing that Neil mentioned, too, is that, you know, he was a little disappointed that the media jumped on the negative results and not the positive. Um, most of the results were quite positive in terms of, uh, you know, what's on the label was in the product. So, so that was a good thing, you know, that's, but that's the media for you. You know, they're going to cease upon what's going to move the meter, so to speak. Um, they do test for, like I said, heavy metals. I'm pretty sure I brought that up. And, you know, we've done a, a video in the past on metal content and protein powders when Consumer Reports did a hit piece a few years ago. And utterly failed to give any context, um, such as things as like a half a cup of sweet potatoes, um, spinach, things like that have far more metals than an equivalent amount of protein powder. And the idea that a small amount of these metals is somehow going to um, affect you negatively is it's just not true. Um, if the smallest toxin were um, wiping people out, you know, the human species would have been gone a long time ago, trust me. And um, also, there are certain things that in a small amount are actually good that would otherwise be bad for you in a large amount. It's called hormesis. Uh, a great example of that is alcohol. You know, a small amount of alcohol seems to have some health benefits. However, you know, obviously binge drinking is, you know, probably not the best idea and that's when it can become problematic. So it, it, it's not this, you know, simple, oh, there's a toxin in there, you know, this and that. And it's not as if companies are adding, you know, metals to things. They're in there because they exist in nature and we're quite our bodies are able to handle that. So, but nevertheless, it doesn't mean you shouldn't test for it because if it does get you know above that level, then of course you want to know. So again, somebody like Labdoor is doing that for you. Um, so I do recommend you guys check out the site. I'll link it below. It's labdoor.com again. Um, they have a smartphone app. If you know you're you're shopping on our site, hopefully on your you know PC, and you know you want to check on your phone, um, or you know if you go to a store, or what have you. I don't know why you would, but. Um, those are options for you. So I hope I covered everything for you guys. I really wanted to cover the amino spiking thing because I've been asked about it before. And like I said, there's some nuance to it. So you understand that, you know, if it's disclosed, that's one thing. If it's not disclosed, that's uh, another thing. And then what an actual protein test tells you. Just relying on something that quantifies nitrogen alone, such as Cadol, is not going to tell you whether it's spiked or not. You have to perform another assay, as I said, to uh, check to quantify the amount of amino acids that you'd expect in a given protein. So I hope this was helpful. You can check us out at facebook.com slash bestpricenutrition. Thanks for watching.